1963, officials with India's space agency were still moving rocket parts around on bicycles. In 2023, they successfully landed a spacecraft on the moon. This accomplishment was especially emotional because four years ago, in 2019, a software glitch caused its predecessor, Chandrayaan 2's lander, to crash into the moon's surface. So they were nervous this time, understandably so. In fact, I was not that much confident because uh, as a person who has been doing in this, uh, in this domain for 36 years, I know there are thousands of things, any of that could uh, can anytime go wrong and derail. The pressure was immense, admitted the director of the center that spearheaded the construction of the spacecraft. The amount of effort is tremendous. The smiles that filled the room were a testament to the resilience of the Trondurion 3's team, who navigated the Vikram lander to avoid all those potholes to come in for a soft landing. This footage has been super sped up. The rover Pragyan then rolled out of the lander's belly to begin exploring the lunar surface. And we became the first country to go to the near to the south pole of the moon. Astronauts are racing to get to the lunar south pole, as spacecraft have detected water ice there which can potentially be extracted and turned into drinking water, food, and rocket fuel. NASA desperately wants to land humans there before China. I don't want uh, China to get to the South Pole first with humans and then say, this is ours, stay out. While China has succeeded Russia as the most significant rival to American influence in space, India is emerging as a force to be reckoned with. India's small and scrappy space agency is growing more powerful by the day. It started off small by launching satellites after establishing its space program in 1962, four years after NASA, under the leadership of the late physicist Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. The lunar lander Vikram was named in his honor, a tribute to his vision, which he described this way. There are some who question the relevance of space activities in a developing nation. To us, there is no ambiguity of purpose, we must be second to none in the application of advanced technologies to the real problems of man and society. Initially, India's space agency, which later evolved into ISRO, collaborated with multiple countries. That iconic photo from 60 years ago is part of an American-made rocket. Transporting parts by bike is a testament to India's resourcefulness. When I mentioned on X that the Chandrayaan-3 budget was less than that of the movie Interstellar, Elon Musk replied, good for India. By the way, let's connect on X. I'm at NewsThink. The link is in my description. India's space agency has always worked on a shoestring budget. While NASA's Mars probe mission, MAVEN, cost $671 million, India's Mars probe mission, Mongolian, cost just $74 million. By the way, India became the first country to successfully reach the Red Planet on its maiden voyage in 2014. The entire Indian Department of Space budget for 2023 is $1.5 billion for both civilian and military use, a fraction of NASA's $25 billion budget or the U.S. Space Force's $26 billion budget. To be fair, NASA's much larger budget is a reflection of its size and accomplishments. They've got astronauts in orbit. The U.S. is the only country to have landed astronauts on the moon, albeit the last time was 1972 and they're now trying to send humans back to the moon and one day to Mars. Although the US spends more on space as a percentage of GDP than India, compare America 0.28% to India 0.04%, it's much less than what NASA spent during the glory days, which was over 4% of the total US budget. For India, doing more with less is possible because of its cheap labor market, where aerospace engineers might just earn $1,000 a month, which is not even minimum wage in America. A lot of the technology used by ISRO is also developed in its own country rather than being imported. It used to rely on the French space agency, CNS, to supply parts for its liquid-fueled rocket engine, Vicus, which powers various ISRO launch vehicles. But now the engine is made in Mumbai by the company Godridge Aerospace in a suburb of the sprawling city. It takes about five months to create an engine and then it's shipped to ISRO by road at a careful pace of 20 kilometers an hour or 12 miles an hour taking two weeks to go from Mumbai to ISRO's Vikram Sarabhai Space Center in Tiruvannamthapuram. Another way India keeps its space agency light and nimble is through shared launches. Think rideshare with other countries in the space industry, where multiple payloads, usually satellites, hitch a ride on a single launch, reducing India's overall costs. ISRO has had commendable successes until now, but landing on the moon has marked a monumental leap for the nation, showing its capabilities on the global stage. 
we will be now looking at putting the man in uh, space putting a spacecraft around uh, venus and landing a craft in uh, mars india has actually never sent people to space on its own an Indian astronaut, or Vyomanaut, as they call them, flew into orbit on a Soviet rocket in 1984. India is preparing its first astronaut mission called Gaganyaan, which aims to send three astronauts into orbit on its own spacecraft. But the mission has faced delays, and ISRO hasn't announced a date for it. As the curtains drew to a close on the 20th century, the Cold War space race gave way to a new race. The U.S. remains the dominant player, with private companies, notably SpaceX, shaping the landscape of space exploration. China is watching SpaceX's every move and aims to create its own answer to SpaceX's fully reusable rocket Starship. Russia now lags behind, symbolized by its lunar lander crashing into the moon mere days before India's triumph. India may have been late getting into the game, but it has proven it has plenty of potential. We'll continue to do our best and make our flag fly, ISRO's as well as India's flag fly high. Thank you very much. One of my favorite parts of a successful mission is seeing the team's reaction. If you're inspired by what these engineers have achieved and want to develop similar skills or brush up on what you already know, Brilliant is the place to learn. Brilliant is a website and app where you can learn math, computer science, and data science interactively. You can dive into their mathematical thinking course by seeing fractions, percentages, and ratios in a new light. If you're new to programming, the Thinking in Code course gets you designing simple programs like map navigation. I like to take a few minutes out of my day to go through their logic puzzles to improve my analytical thinking skills. So why not give Brilliant a try? It's free for 30 days by heading to the custom link in my description, brilliant.org slash newsthink. The first 200 people to sign up through my custom link will receive a 20% discount on Brilliant's premium annual subscription, unlocking all of the courses. Thanks for watching. I'm Cindy Palm.